According to NBC News, 21 states have cracked down on people who pass off their pets as service animals, and Minnesota is now among them. A bill that makes it a crime for misrepresenting a pet as a service animal has been signed into law. Joining me in the studio to talk about the new law is the bill's author, Senator Justin Eichhorn. Welcome. Thank you for having me today. I appreciate it. How did this issue come to your attention? Well, I'm in multifamily housing, and it actually kind of started there but grew from that. So the bill that was actually signed won't affect multifamily housing in any way, but once we started looking into the issue, we realized how big it really was uh, in all places of public accommodation and how much uh, people with disabilities that actually needed these service animals were actually being affected, and the scope was much bigger than we had realized kind of on the front end of it. So this is just one step in, in potentially multiple steps to kind of work through this gray area of service animals, emotional support animals that we'll talk about later, and just pets. Correct. I think there's, there needs to be a larger discussion about it because there is so much confusion, uh, confusion surrounding the issues. I mean, there's, there's landlords and tenants that are confused. There's people that are confused what they can and can't bring into a grocery store or a restaurant. And I think it's going to take some education, but there, I think there needs to be a larger discussion around service animals and emotional support animals in general. But I think the legislation we passed this year was something everybody could rally around because it really protected those people that have the real service animal needs. So I think that's why we were able to go forward with what we got passed this year, but I think there will be a larger discussion in years to come. And the law that passed this year has two parts, and yep. I want to talk about the part that I don't understand very well first, and then we'll talk about the sure. other part. Um, so the first part that most people, I think, do understand is that misrepresenting an animal um, will be a crime. But the second part is about immunity from liability. So who's immune from what kind of liability? So this is kind of a, a property rights provision and it was actually brought to us by Senator Ann Rest and something that came from somebody in her district. So if, if, if somebody brings a fake service animal into a place of a public accommodation, whether it be a grocery store or a restaurant or a motel or whatever the establishment may be, and that non-trained service animal acts out and bites another patron um, or whatever it may be, that this, the animal owner is now liable instead of the property owner. Before that, the property owner could be held liable for charges and could potentially be sued. So now it's going to provide those property protections. So the person who brought in the service or the fake service animal that acted out yep. is now responsible for whatever damages occur. Yep, either damages or you know if an animal bites somebody and there's a, a liability type issue there, or somebody's got to go to the doctor and get stitches, mm -hmm. the animal owner will be the one that's liable. Okay, and so to the other part, beginning now on August 1st, a person who knowingly misrepresents a pet as a service animal will be committing a petty misdemeanor. So what does this mean, and are there charges more significant for subsequent offenses? How does this, how does this play out? There are charges that are more significant for uh, second, third, fourth, fifth offenses, but what we really want to do is, you know, have some education. So if you, if you have a second, third, fourth, fifth offense, it's going to be a misdemeanor. It starts as a petty misdemeanor, just kind of a slap on the hand. Initially, I think... Uh, businesses, especially on the front end, uh, property owners are going to use this as an opportunity to educate. There will be some signage that goes along with it, some education from the state that goes along with it to help property owners understand what this means and, and what their rights are to help navigate this. Um, okay, go ahead. so businesses, you were talking about education yep. and and Part of the bill, it says that businesses will now be able to display yep. notices such as service animals welcome. It is illegal to mis misrepresent an animal in that person's possession as a service animal. Yep. Also now the Council on Disability will prepare brochures to help businesses yep. understand because the ADA limits the questions people can ask to is this animal required because of a disability and what task does the animal perform. So this goes to that education. Yep. How will this law be enforced though? I think again initially back to the to some of the previous question I think it's going to be an education piece I don't think somebody's going to call the cops just because you have your dog in the store if you're somebody who's in there a second or third time and you know this is becoming a problem that's when a, a person of authority will get brought in and some type of citation would be written up again this is this is intended to get to a spot where people that have these real service needs aren't being affected anymore because currently you know, you can buy a fake vest on Amazon for a couple dollars and, you know, the average person doesn't know if it's a real service animal or a fake service animal. So allowing these, these property owners to ask these questions will help kind of take some of the, the stigma out of it maybe. And, you know, so that way people that do have the real needs 
can continue to go forward and have those. They, they're not going to have the worry that they're going to get kicked out of a business because there will be some of those procedures in place where they're going to be protected. And those people that are the bad actors, you know, they're not going to like it at first, but ultimately it's the right thing to do. And there was testimony in committee where people who had service animals who are highly trained, cost a lot of money to train, their animals were attacked by other other non-service animals and it caused all kinds of problems. I want to talk about a gray area though that we spoke about before before we went on camera and that's emotional support animals who are not protected but are considered essential by medical professionals for people suffering from physical, mental, and emotional disabilities. So where is the, where is the, this is kind of a gray area. How, what should these people do with their animals? So this, this won't touch anything in housing. This is only gonna be for, you know, just the average business you'd go to in a, in a standard day. Those people are unfortunately not gonna be able to bring their animal in because they're not trained, as you said. Um, and those animals could still end up biting a legitimate service animal. You talked about the cost, we've heard as high as fifty or sixty thousand dollars for a well-trained service animal, whether it's a seeing eye dog or a dog that sniffs for seizures or things like that. Um, they can be very, very expensive and something as little as a small bite from an untrained service animal could render that that animal unusable and there's a lot of barriers for someone to be able to get another animal. So unfortunately, even if it's emotional support, that animal's either gonna have to stay at home or in the car, so it doesn't interfere with legitimate service animals that, that perform those, those tasks. Certainly, emotional support animals are important to a lot of people, and we understand that. That's why we didn't touch it in any other areas, but it is a gray area, maybe it should be, because we, we, we really need to find that balance so that way everybody's rights are protected. And under the old law, before this went into place, people that, that had those types of service animals that they need for every day just, just to be able to make it, walk across the street or into the grocery store, were being greatly affected. So, so maybe more to come. Senator Eichhorn, I want to thank you yeah. so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it.